What's up, everybody? It's your friendly neighborhood gamer, your host, Coach Key, and welcome to Legends of Dice Cafe, where we learn about tabletop RPGs from old school to modern together. And from time to time, play some of my favorite video games. And if you're new to my channel, I drop a new video every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And for today's video, we're going to be reviewing Blades in the Dark. I'm going to give you my first impressions on this game. Don't forget to hit that like button. It definitely helps a new channel like mine continue to grow. A quick thank you for everyone who has supported the channel, whether it's a like, a comment, or even just clicking on a video. It's very much so appreciated. And honestly, it's encouraging and very inspiring. So thank you so much. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's get into it. So I paid about $28 on Amazon for this book and I'll leave a link below. Honestly, for everything that you get, I would say that it's, if you have the funds to do it, then I think it will be an awesome addition into your tabletop RPG collection, to be honest. You criminals building like a criminal enterprise. <laughs> Chapter one, as far as the players, each player creates a character and works with the other players to create the crew in which their characters belong to. And right down here, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I'm just gonna show you a few things that kind of popped out to me as I was going through the book. I'll go in a little deeper later down the line. Here go your character types you can choose from. You got cutters, hounds, leeches. Of course, it goes into detail, lurks, slides, spiders, and whispers. I always play a good character. It would be interesting and nice for once to switch it up, you know? In addition to creating scoundrel characters, you'll also create the crew by choosing which type of criminal enterprise you're interested in exploring. So you got assassins, occult, interesting, bravos, thugs, hawkers, sell illegal products, smugglers, shadows, thieves, and spies. It sounds pretty interesting. It also says the crew isn't restricted. You can pursue a variety of activities. It's there to help you focus the game. And here we go over to the game master. The game master isn't in charge of the story and doesn't have to plan events ahead of time. They present interesting opportunities to the players, then follow the chain of action and consequences wherever they lead. And I also like the reminder down here, read this book once through. You won't immediately understand everything until you see it play. You won't get all the rules right the first time. That's fine. The rules will make more sense when you read them again after you play. The system of Blades in the Dark is designed to be learned as an ongoing process. Each time you play, you'll get better until everything is second nature. And then here's the core system. So this is a dice pool. I've never played that type of system before, so I'm definitely looking forward to playing this. Blades in the Dark uses six-sided dice. You roll several at once and read the highest result. And then you've got actions and attributes. You've got attune, command, consort, finesse, hunt, prowl, skirmish, study, survey, sway, tinker, and wreck. You make an action roll when your character does something potentially dangerous or troublesome. So attribute ratings, there are three attributes in a game system that the player characters use to resist bad consequences, insight, prowess, and resolve. Chapter two is your character creation. So what you do is you choose a playbook. Your playbook is your character type. The different character types that we went over in the basics, which I like that it introduces you to different things within the basics before it actually goes into the book. And then it starts to actually make more sense. Uh, like I said that it would as you go on into the book and read more and of course play, which I haven't done yet, but I plan on doing that. And first, I'm probably gonna try this out solo. When you choose a playbook, you're choosing a set of special abilities, which gives your character ways to break the rules in various ways. Then next, you would choose your heritage. Your character's heritage describes where their family line is from. And of course it describes the different ones. You also choose your background. Your background describes what they did before they joined the crew and then you choose your vice <laughs> which i thought was pretty cool every scoundrel is in thrall to some vice or another which they indulge to deal with stress once you assemble your character it goes into assembling your crew you choose your crew type that your crew type is what you're known for in dusk so people were going to treat you accordingly. And then of course, in the back of it, it gives you an actual summary of the crew creation, which I think is really cool. So chapter four, the score. A score is a single operation with a particular goal. 
A score can be long and involved or short and sweet. There might be lots of roles and trouble or just a few actions to resolve it. A score consists of key elements detailed in the chapter. So flashbacks, when an operation is underway, you can invoke a flashback to roll for an action in the past that impacts your current situation, which I thought was really cool. Maybe you convince the district watch surgeon to cancel the blue coat patrol tonight. So you make a sway roll to see how that went. And then of course, it gives you an example of flashbacks. And then, of course, at the end of chapter four, which I think is pretty cool, they actually give you an example of an actual score. Chapter five, downtime. All the crew finishes a score, succeed or fail. They take time to recover, recoup, and prepare for the next operation. This phase of the game is called downtime. And downtime is divided into four parts, which are resolved in order. Got your payoff, heat, entanglements, downtime activities. The PCs indulge in their vices to remove stress, work on long-term projects, recover from injuries. Now, I could see how this would make for an interesting story using your vices to heal. And then, of course, at the end of chapter five, downtime activity summary. So chapter six, how to play, and that's exactly what it is. It goes into more detail of things that we went over in basics and expands on it. Again, we won't go into detail. I'll leave that for you to check out so I don't take away from you <laughs> enjoying reading this for the first time. So then it goes into chapter seven, running the game, GM goals. When you run a game, try to accomplish these goals. Play to find out what happens. Convey the fictional world honestly. Bring dusk to life. And that's when GM actions, player characters have six actions they can use to get things done in the game. You have actions too. When it's your turn to contribute and you're not sure what to do, look at your list of actions and pick one. And then it also has GM principles. When you pursue your goals and choose actions, use your principles to guide your decision making. GM best practices, earn the trust of the group, lead an interesting conversation, Create an atmosphere of inquiry at the table. Help the players use the game system. Don't block. Keep the meta channel open. Be a curious explorer of the game and play. These are just my top reminders. And then it also has GM bad habits. This one was interesting because, you know, currently I'm playing the campaign at D&D 5th edition and you tell the characters what to roll. But here, it doesn't work like that. It says this bad habit usually happens if you've GM'd other games <laughs> where this is your job. You might say, give me a finesse roll or a different type of check it says get used to saying instead how do you do that ask the player which action they use tell them the position and effect level that you see in the situation using that action and as to why you think that and then starting the game preparing for the first session now you got chapter eight strange forces now i like this part in the fantasy world of blades and dark supernatural powers exist to wield arcane abilities humanity must harness strange forces in various ways I would love to take some of this as inspiration for creating something else. <laughs> and look, like I was just saying, here's chapter nine, changing the game. After you play Blades for a good while, or even right away, if you're one of those types, you'll start to think about how you might add stuff to the game or how elements of the game might be different or how you might play a different sort of game using the Blade system as a foundation for something new. These impulses are called game design and you're onto a very rocky and rewarding road. This chapter is a crash course in some design concepts that might help get you started. It gives you a city guide to dusk, history of it, cultures, languages. It goes in. It's got a lot of information. I see why you can use this as real inspiration and create your own thing. Then it has a map of Dusk, different landmarks, districts, and it gives you details about each district. And then you have random tables in the back creating streets, buildings, people. I think this is pretty cool. Overall, I like Blades in the Dark. After the campaign that I'm running, which is my very first time DMing, I will definitely add Blades in the Dark to the list. But anyway, in the meantime, in between time, and in my spare time, <laughs> I'll be running Blades in the Dark solo. So stay tuned for that video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any of this cool content that I drop weekly. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back again next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace.